Okay. Now, uh, friends, let's try to understand about this big IP system. Now, you may ask, Sanjeev, we were talking about F5, F5, F5. What is this big IP? The big IP is the appliance name. So, F5 big IP means F5 is a vendor and big IP is their appliance. And whether we talk about F5, whether we are talk, talking about big IP, we are talking about F5 load balancers, right? So what is a big IP? It is the appliance provided by F5. So here, F5 device, which is functioning as a, a load balancer, is a default deny device. Now, what is a default deny device? Friends, you know when you create access list in the routers, there is an implicit deny already there in that list. You have to just write a rule to allow because the default deny is already there. So same thing is happening here also. By default, F5 device are the implicit deny device. Means if you will not allow anything, they will not by default pass any traffic. So anything reaching to the interface of F5 will be dropped by default. It will not be allowed to pass the device. Second, being a proxy, being a full proxy, client and server, whenever they communicate, they have separate connection, means client will maintain a connection with F5 load balancer. And client is thinking that client is communicating to actual server. But in reality, client is only connecting or communicating to the load balancer. And on the other side, load balancer is talking to server and server thinks that this load balancer is my right or truly client well what f5 is doing it is just receiving traffic on one of the interface performing its required task and then forwarding it to other interface receiving the response on other interface and again sending back on that original interface. And in reality, client and server, they do not have direct connection anytime. They, do, they never had a direct one-to-one -one connection. Client is always connected to load balancer, but client thinks that the server is being accessed. While the server thinks that load balancer is its client, in reality, the client is there. Uh, client is a different client. It's not a true load balancer. Load balancer is acting like a man in the middle and managing both the connections simultaneously. So whenever this thing is happening, we call it the device is functioning in a full proxy mode. And here, friends, let me tell you, the client may be thinking that its connection is encrypted, but the connection is encrypted till the load balancer, while the connection from load balancer to the server is unencrypted. For example, friends, when you access google.com, you think because you are using HTTPS, your communication is secured from your browser to the Google server. Is that right or not? But in reality, your connection is secure from your browser till the load balancer, right? Because you need a protection when the traffic is on public network. And public network ends when this load balancer is, is there. Because after load balancer, it's local network. So you need only a protection till 
the public network so so client side connection can be encrypted but on server side beyond the load balancer the server side connection are generally kept unencrypted because you need a faster response time for the server also friends going through the same logic users users can use ip version 6 for their uh, connection or origination but the load balancer can serve those requests by ipv4 or vice versa client can make requests on ipv4 and server can be accessed uh, load balancer can make available servers servers using ipv6 so you can make a compressed request and that response can be uncompressed so the, this is the example which is pointed by the point number two in the server side that client side connection behavior can be different than the server side connection behavior now friends let's try to understand the internal structure of a big ip machine so the big ip machine has two functional areas you can see you have a blue color area this area that you can see this area is called application delivery area or application delivery service so the structure here is responsible for receiving the traffic distributing the traffic and other aspect related to application delivery and the other area the different area is a for your management and there is a complete separation of a management area to the application delivery area in cisco we learn about you know management plane data plane and control plane so that same concept is here management is completely separated from the control and data plane so any problem in one area is not going to negatively affect the other area so if your device is under a lot of pressure then management will be free now friends you know every vendor nowadays have an operating system for example juniper has operating system called junos and on the junos it implement all its protection in the same way checkpoint has an operating system called gaia a fortinet has an operating system called forty os polo alto has a, an operating system called pan os a cisco has ios and some new os is also there so every vendor has an os and based on that os on top of that os they implement their security or their functionalities so this big ip also has an operating system and that operating system is known as tmos traffic management operating system so this is the center of everything all the protections all the functionalities are added on top of this operating system okay now let's try to understand what are the functionalities uh, or what are the features so i there are so many features for example we have ltm the most basic function ltm is dealing with load balancing you have gtm here the load balancing is happening of the uh, dns request then we have aam and we have afm apm asm several functionalities like here asm is for application security module afm is the application firewall uh, management so there are several modules that you can use in the in the application delivery concepts so we have ltm we have dns we have access policy manager uh, access policy manager is a is a uh, is a feature friends where we handle several functions of 
accessing, controlling the access of the users. We talk about SSO, we talk about federation services and multi-factor authentication. I would say it is a, it, its functionality is similar to ICE. In Cisco, we have identity service engine where access is controlled. So that kind of functionality is not there. Although I'm not good in Cisco, so my understanding of this uh, ICE is not very good, but I know ICE can do so many things. Okay, so ASM with, will deal with application security, right. Okay, so friends, management, right? Management of these boxes are done through command line and graphically. And nowadays, we have uh, a, another tool called uh, scripting, called, um, I would say, APIs. But largely, we use either CLI and GI, GUI. And with the help of CLI, we have a, a shell. We have a, a special interface to deal with the, the device. And that, that is known as TMSH, Traffic Management Shell. So this shell receives the commands and gives you a response. So these are the largely two methods are there, but in CLI, we have a special technique called TMSH. With that tool, we can, we can uh, help OS, operating system, TMOS, to understand what we need and how to achieve it. Basically, we forward the request. So, friends, a physical device, when you see a FAB device, there are several, you know, smaller to higher level devices. And let me tell you, my, when I say smaller, that smaller is also have huge capacity. Now, if you see, the numbers are being marked. Now, we see number one. The number one is showing you a management interface. Now, you can put a, a Ethernet card there and you can connect your laptop and from that laptop you can start managing graphically using management interface and we need high availability also because we cannot depend upon only one single load balancer so we need a high availability and for that we have a failover port number four we connect them through uh, these number four port so that heartbeat can be listened now whenever you are accessing the web uh, web of the device you have to you will see this option like on left hand side on the page you can see statistic i app dns local traffic acceleration so these are the option that you will find on the left hand side and you have to nav navigate through this means if you click dns you see several options you click traffic the local traffic you see several options your navigation is shown by this option so for example it shows you that you first access local traffic then you went to a pool then you went to a pool list and then you access the http pool so this will basically tell you the navigation how you nav navigated till the point you reached now you see the name is here partition path is there availability is there health monitors are there so all their information will be shown here if you if you uh, explore them you will see the explanation of all these options available so if you are not getting the meaning of some option, you can simply go to the help and you can read about it. On your device, on your device graphical user interface, at the top, just below this option, you will see the information about your access. 
you can see the host name given to this box, the IP address given to the box, date and time, and who is the user, and what role it has, who is currently dealing with the device. And now I will tell you how you are going to manage your device. The default IP is 192.168.1.245. If you change the 245 decimal number to hexadecimal number, you will find F5. The result will be F5. That's why the management IP is 245. Now, you have, a, you have got web access or you have got command line access. So how the initial licensing should be done? This is a device that, is, that you are using and you need to license this device. You get license from a license server maintained by F5. F5 people will share or will give you one base registration key. Now this base registration key, you will get it because when you purchase a license, you will get this base license key or base registration key. Now you have a key and it looks like this. Now you put this key on the box, inside a box, you will enter the box and then you will generate a file and that file is called a dossier and that dossier will be sent to this F5 licensing server. Now the dossier is sent to F5 license server, that license server will check the information in the dossier Basically, the information in the dossier is that this is the serial number of the device, these are the features available, and uh, will the user has this kind of uh, feature enabled? Uh, do they have rights for it? So that is going to be checked by license server. Now, when license server checks it, it will validate, and as a response, it will generate a a license file. So who is going to generate the license file? License server. And what you need to provide it? A dossier. So you will get a license and you have to get the license and put it into your F5 box. And then your device is fully licensed. Now the same option is possible through online. So the option that I showed you is an offline process. Now online process. In online process, you can see licensing server and your uh, F5 device are connected with a cloud, which is internet. Now in that case, you just need to enter the base registration key and you click OK. You select the option automatic and you click OK. All the procedure like generation of dossier and getting the license file, putting it into the box, everything becomes automatic and uh, you need not to do anything. But for this, you need an internet connect. Now, suppose some way or the other, you did the licensing. Then immediately after licensing, you are required to perform provisioning. Now here on left hand side, you will see the features available. You will see a management, you will see a LTM, you will see a ASM, you will see GTM. So these are the features. And if you see the provisioning, provisioning for these features are none, none, none. Means these features are given no resources. Okay. so you have to enable the provisioning means you have to allocate the resources. What are the further information needed for it? We'll talk later, but right now, I need to tell you that after licensing, the immediate activity that you need to do is a provisioning. 